Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into another Week 11 college football video, this time giving you guys five teams I am officially putting on upset alert for week number 11 based off of the spread. These are all teams that are favored that I think very likely could lose. So let's kick it off. We've got Penn State plus one and a half versus Michigan. So a little interesting thing here. Penn State opened as a one point favorite last Sunday. I saw, I believe on Tuesday it was a pick 'em, and now Michigan has moved to a one and a half point favorite. It doesn't surprise me. Michigan's a very sound, good football team. But I think with that Blake Corum injury, that's a big injury. You may say, well, they still have Haskins, they have another running back. They really use those two running backs in tandem, meaning they need both of them. They two they bring two different things to the table with Corum being more the scat back, kind of the elusive guy, Haskins the power guy with just Haskins. Michigan moving the ball is going to be very tough. And I was just thinking about this earlier today. This is really a no-win situation for Michigan because Penn State's not even ranked somehow. I mean, personally, if I were to rank the top 20 teams, Penn State would probably be in the top 15. The fact that Penn State isn't even ranked by the committee, yet teams like Auburn and Wisconsin, who Penn State beat, are ranked is ridiculous. You're Michigan. You know as a Michigan fan, this game's going to be miserable. You know it's going to be close. Third quarter, 17-17, 20-20. Penn State's a good team. They're a good defensive team. They're playing at home. This is a noon start time. This is a really good Big Ten game, but I just like Penn State in this one. Michigan, one-dimensional. Will they be able to pass the ball? I love Penn State's defense. Michigan's only a one-and-a-half point, point favorite, but I think Penn State does pull off the upset. Lower scoring. I love the under in this game, and if you're a Michigan fan, how is Penn State not ranked? Like That is one of the most egregious things I've seen Ever from the committee, ever. It's like you're talking about a team like Auburn. Does all I think Auburn and Penn State have the same record? I believe Auburn has three losses. Penn State plays their C game against Auburn. Auburn gets like five extra downs from the referees. Penn State still beats Auburn by eight points. They beat Wisconsin in Madison. They have the same record as Wisconsin. Yet Wisconsin's ranked inside the top 20. Penn State's not even ranked. And this line right here is is great evidence as to why Penn State, Vegas think, thinks Penn State is a, is a good team. They opened as a one-point favorite against the top team in the nation in Michigan. That line shifted. Penn State's the underdog now. People putting money on Michigan. Michigan's a really good team. They're a really well-coached team. Really good defense. Aiden Hutchinson, one of the best defensive players in the country. The best uh, Big Ten defensive player, I would say. Uh, but overall, Penn State at home, noon game. Michigan concerned about their running game. Uh, give me Penn State plus one and a half. Number two, Troy plus six and a half versus Louisiana. I love... Troy's defense. Troy's, Troy has one of the best defenses in the country. They don't give up anything. They're at home against the struggling Louisiana team. Louisiana cannot pass the football, ladies and gentlemen, but they cannot throw the ball against a defense like Troy. That's a terrible combination. I see Troy winning this game outright as six and a half point underdogs at home. Really good spot for Troy against a Louisiana team who's been a little disappointing this year. Started out being 23rd overall and, you know, being ranked. Lose to Texas week one. A, a bad Texas team, let's be honest. We now know that. Uh, so Louisiana, you know, they're six and a half one runs. Give me Troy in this one to win that game outright at home. Number three, Old Miss plus two and a half versus Texas A&M. We have to respect the Texas A&M defense and how good their defense is. But this is college football and offense wins you games. Old Miss is at home two and a half point underdogs I like that I like Old Miss winning this game outright I haven't been a fan of Matt Corral the thing with Matt Corral the guy just he just how is he still in the Heisman race I do not understand it I think he's thrown a total of like six touchdown passes in his last five games yet because of his rushing give me a the dude is not he should not be in the Heisman race but by the way, let me tell you something about the Heisman race. It seems completely right, wide open right now. I guess Kenneth Walker still is leading it, but you had C.J. Strout struggle against Nebraska, two interceptions. Bryce Young only put up 20 total points, although Alabama's rushing game did Bryce Young no favors. How about Alabama, six rushing yards against LSU? But 
the, the, you know, the Heisman right now, wide open. I get, Again, I guess Kenneth Walker is your leading man, but I think Ohio State is going to completely shut Kenneth Walker down next week when Michigan State travels to Columbus. Ohio State's run defense has been better of late, and you're really going to key in on him. You don't want, you know, if you, when you're facing Michigan State, just don't let Kenneth Walker beat you. Michigan learned that the hard way, I guess. Just shut Kenneth Walker down, make Peyton Thorne make, you know, make throws through the passing game. Uh, that Penn State, Ohio, or that uh, Michigan State, Ohio State game, it's a terrible matchup for, for Michigan State. They are horrific in coverage. They get no pressure. The one thing that C.J. Stroud really struggles with is any sort of pressure. Make him move. Make him throw on the on the run. Both of C.J. Stroud's interceptions against Nebraska were, were him outside the pocket throwing on the run. Uh, Michigan State, zero pass rush. They get zero pressure. They have a terrible pass defense. We saw Purdue throw for over 500 yards against them. Ohio State is going to slaughter Michigan State. That spread's probably going to be about 17 or something. But uh, yeah, I wasn't even supposed to be talking about that. I got off track a little bit. But Old Miss, that's a good matchup at home. I understand Texas A&M de A&M's defense is good, but their offense is really lacking. It's really lacking. Only 20 points last week against Auburn. Give me Old Miss to win that game outright. Number four, Washington. Washington plus five and a half versus Arizona State. Washington is an extremely desperate team. They have an extremely desperate head coach who's on the hot seat right now. They need a win. And this Arizona State team, very disinterested. I see, you know, they got their win against USC last week. It's nice. You were at home. They traveled to Washington. Really no motivation for Arizona State here. You've already, they've already got multiple losses. They're already out of it when it comes to Pac-12 championship consideration. They're out of that. There's really no, Washington at home. I like them in this spot. Close, low scoring. That's how Washington is going to win games. They have a bad offense. They have a good defense. But again, I'm just wondering the level of enthusiasm Arizona State's going to have in this game. That concerns me. So I could see Washington not only covering the five and a half, but winning this game outright. Uh, number five, New Mexico State plus... <laughs> <laughs> this was just a troll. New Mexico State plus 51 and a half at, Al at Alabama. Imagine they won somehow. Imagine they won. Uh, but no, the actual one is Virginia plus five and a half versus Notre Dame. If you're Virginia, you get out to a lead early. Brendan Armstrong, we know with the injuries. I tried, you know, seeing what an, up an update on Brendan Armstrong. This is the one problem with college football. They do not disclose anything when it comes to injuries. Uh, so we don't know how healthy Brendan Armstrong is. If he was healthy, I think this line would be about three. Notre Dame would be about three point favorites instead of five and a half point favorites. I think the line opened at four. Maybe four and a half. No, I think it opened at four and it's been bet up to five and a half. Maybe it opened. I don't know. But Notre Dame was around four point favorites. It's been bet up. We The public does not know how, how healthy Brennan Armstrong is, those ribs, and they're not disclosing anything. You know, Virginia's obviously, they don't want Notre Dame to know how, how healthy Brennan Armstrong is. If he is healthy or relatively healthy, if you're Virginia, put pressure on Notre Dame. Make Jack Cohn have to put together multiple touchdown drives. To me, the Notre Dame offense lacks explosive plays. And when you're facing a team like Virginia, as long as Brendan Armstrong is relatively healthy and they get several explosive plays, they're going to have quick scoring drives and Notre Dame's going to have to go you know, 12, 13 plays to get their touchdowns. I like Virginia because of their offense in this matchup and because of Notre Dame's inability to create a lot of explosive plays. That's why I like Virginia to potentially win this game outright. Unfortunately, a lot of it depends on the health of Brendan Armstrong. And then I do have another one here, I guess. Wash oh, I like this one. Washington State plus 14 at Oregon. This was a game I added on late, and I'm just I'm picturing it in my head. This is a 10:30 start time. Washington State quietly a good team. Two weeks ago they get a big win at Arizona State. Last week they have their bye week, right? Going on the road to Oregon. You think Oregon's 14 point favorites. There's no way they're going to lose this game. I'm picturing a 13 to 13 tie mid third quarter. It's about 1 a.m. People are, some people are sleeping. Nobody knows. This is one of those games where it's like nobody's watching it, but it ends up being people like, oh my goodness, this could be an upset. I'm picturing it now. I'm seeing it. Washington, Washington State, they're not great, but they can also move the football. They're not a bad team. They beat Arizona State two weeks ago. They're decent. Oregon is a team I have never bought. I'm not buying Anthony Brown. They do have a decent defense, but this is a team that can be upset. And remember, Oregon travels to Utah after this game. They may be looking ahead. Washington State may be able to catch them off guard a little bit. I'm liking this upset, this outright upset win for Washington State over Oregon in Eugene. 
10.30 start time. I'm liking the vibe on that one. I'm liking it, but those are my overall. I've got Michigan on upset alert, Louisiana on upset alert, Texas A&M on upset alert, Arizona State on upset alert. Uh, the Alabama one was just a troll, right? New Mexico State is like the, I think New Mexico State right now is like the third worst team in FPS. The clear worst team is UMass. I mean, it's not even close at this point. UMass is running away with it. UMass, I think, just lost to Rhode Island last week, an FCS school, and that game wasn't even competitive. UMass is historic bad, but uh, New Mexico State is one of the worst teams out of the 130. They'd be like 100. I'd rank them like 127th out of the 130 FBS teams. Uh, Virgi- I, I have Notre Dame on upset alert, which quite honestly, I have Notre Dame on upset alert every week and they keep proving me wrong. I'm not even going to lie about that. And then I have Oregon on upset alert as well in kind of a late night. Nobody's paying attention to it. 10 o'clock, 10.30 start time. You're looking at your phone. It's 1 a.m. This game's tied late in the third quarter. What's going on with Oregon? Oregon, not a great offense. They can get upset. This Washington State team can beat Oregon, especially Oregon looking ahead to the Utah game. Yeah, guys, I see it. I'm seeing into the future. I can already tell. But guys, that is going to do it for this Week 11 upset special video. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description. I'm, of course, the Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.